Hey everybody, I wanted to talk today about iterators in .NET. Um, if you've ever used, if you ever created a method that did I enumerable of something and you used a yield statement to return something from that method, you've used iterators. Uh, so yield has some really awesome, really powerful um, characteristics about it. Um, but it can often be confusing. I, I work with a lot of developers and inevitably at least some of them have never understood the really the goings on of iterators under the hood. Uh, and they are really a powerful, awesome construct, um, but they're a little misunderstood. So without further ado, I wanna get started. So what I have here is I've just got some C-sharp uh, code over here that will show up over here as IL. IL stands for intermediary language, and it is the language that all uh, .NET languages sort of compile down to before they are jitted and then executed. So it is literally the intermediary language, the language that sits between the high level language that we pro program with and the machine code assembly, whatever, that gets executed on the machine that the code is executing on. Um, so to me personally, I, I'm, I'm not an IL expert. I can look at it, I can understand at a very high level what it's doing, um, but for the most part, uh, I can't read it very well. That's okay, and I'm not expecting anybody to. For this video, for the purposes of this video, uh, I just wanna sort of illustrate something. And I found that IL uh, is really the best way to illustrate it. It really gets the point of iterators across. So um, we have um, a little bit of IL that's generated from this very simple program uh, that just comes on Sharp Lab. So I'm gonna do something. I'm gonna declare a method, and I'm gonna declare an I enumerable method. So I'm gonna call it public I enumerable of string. It's gonna ask me, I think, to import something. So we'll import this. Nope, we will import using, there we go. So get strings. So I'm gonna get here, and then I'm just gonna return a new array and get some strings in there. So I'm gonna say Spencer, I'm gonna return Schneidenbach. I'm gonna say Louis my girlfriend's cat's name. And we're gonna come over here and look at the IL that's generated. So you can see here that it, the method that is being declared, here it is, called get strings, same name as in, uh, it is in C sharp as it is in IL. And you can see that it's creating a new array. That's what this indicates right here. And then it's going ahead and pushing those elements onto the different spaces in the array and then returning that array. So pretty straightforward. There's really no magic going on here. However, the moment you do something interesting, like use a yield statement, the whole thing changes. Let me show you. So I'm gonna change this. So instead of returning new this, I'm gonna comment this out, say goodbye. And I'm gonna say yield Spencer, yield, oh, I need to say yield return. In vb.net, you can say just yield return. Schneidenbach, yield, return, Louis. Let's look at the IL that's here. So I'm just gonna start scrolling down and you can see that the code for iterators is a little different, right? It's not declaring an array and just returning the elements. It's creating a state machine. So under the hood, it's literally, as you are iterating through this I enumerable, it's tracking the state of that I enumerable, what value you yielded from it. So when you call this, and this is the most confusing part of iterators for most developers, when you call get strings as this, it doesn't do anything. Only when you start to ask the element of the I enumerable for elements in this, in this I enumerable, only when you start asking for elements does it actually go through and start to return those elements. And this is really the critical thing. Like none of this code is going to execute. And I have seen many developers who love the yield keyword for convenience, but don't understand the implications of using it. And they're asking me, and they've asked me before, like this method, I'm calling this method, but nothing is happening. It's, I, it's not hitting this breakpoint. It's not gonna hit the breakpoint until you start asking that, until you start asking the iterator, until you start asking that I enumerable for values. And then it's going to start processing that state machine. It's gonna start iterating through. It's gonna look and see what is the current state of this iterator. So if I get this first value here, yield return Spencer, if all I do is get the first value, 
the method stops. The state machine stops executing and it just holds that place, that place that, I, that I've accessed. It just holds in memory that, okay, he asked for the first element. Now, when I get to the point of getting the second element, then I'll resume executing. So it's literally suspend resume. And this is a really powerful concept because it's a nice abstraction over streams. And uh, streams are everywhere in our language and in our day to day. Uh, but in many time, many points, we sort of just abstract our way from them. A perfect example is a web request. When you make a web request, uh, it doesn't just send you every single byte all at once, right? It sends you chunks of data at a time. So that's literally a stream. The data is coming from the server and being streamed to you. Another example is a database query where we're getting rows from a table, especially if we're using something like a SQL data reader, uh, where we're actually reading every row as it's coming through. That's behaving like a stream. So one thing about iterators that up until recently there was a big limitation on is that iterators didn't support async await. So if you declared a method called uh, async task of I enumerable, uh, let's say of string, You can't yield through this. Let me do my imports right here. There we go. So you can't use the yield statement here, right? And what it'll say is that the cannot be an iterator block because task I enumerable of string is not an iterator interface, right? It makes sense, still kind of sucks, right? So previously, if you wanted to say iterate through um, a bunch of websites and then like return the data from those websites, if you wanted to use async semantics, you'd had to do one of a few things. One of the things that you could do is build the array in memory first and then just return that. So I'm gonna say var list equals new list of string. And then I'm gonna say var re response because this is the response from HTTP from the server await HTTP client dot get async. And we'll get our website. And then list.add response wait response.content.read as string async. And then you could just return, return the list, right? So the problem with this code is that you're having to do each one of those asynchronous requests. And let's say for three websites, not a big deal, but let's say you were doing 300. You wanna process them as they're coming in, right? So you'd have to wait until the entire list got built up before it returned and you could do anything with it. Not ideal. So another thing you could do is just write around this by taking out the async parts and do something like this. You could either, if you were smart, you'd use web client, or uh, you might do something like this, where you'd say get async dot get awaiter dot get result. And then, up oh, take out this await because you can't have that there, dot get awaiter dot, dot get result. Um, you could also use just my very favorite, which is just dot result. Uh, get awaiter dot get result is only slightly better, but uh, the bottom line is is that you don't want any of that, right? You don't want to call get awaiter get result unless you absolutely have to. You don't want to call get result unless you absolutely have to. Um, this isn't ideal code either, and I have seen developers write code like this, and in order to use async to get the benefits of iterators by creating a, a stream, right? But uh, then writing a bunch of code that is not good, right? It's not ideal. You don't wanna write uh, async code in a non-async way. You wanna use task wherever you can. So it's short of using a library, which I have done before, C Sharp 8 now just has it built in. So when you come over here, and you're looking and getting for each our var website and websites, var request, H, await HTTP client, get async. You can now just yield back request.content.read as string async. Yield return, because this is not bb.net. So if I were to run this for each var website in get websites async, Try to run this, get a compile time error. So you gotta await it now, wait for each. So, and then of course, async task here, because you can now have a task returning uh, main method. You've been able to do that for a while. Await for each and then website.dump. We'll just take a uh, substring. We'll just take the first hundred characters. Now I'll play this, play, and you see that it dumps the websites as they are downloaded. Um, 
if we were to simulate like a slow HTTP request, await task.delay, let's say two seconds, and print play, you can see that it returns the first one, then it returns the second one, and then it returns this one, right? So good, you've gained, you've gained the ability to stream this data through, um, but in a very natural and a very nice way. So if we switch back to our previous example, where we have our websites and we've got our client and we're iterating through them and reading them, and let's say you wanted to stick with async code and didn't want to use some kind of helper library to do iAsync enumerable, um, with the simulated delay, this is what it would look like for each var website in get strings. Oops, there we go. Get strings, await, await here. So you notice the await keyword is in front of here because it's not an async enumerable. So we are not awaiting for each here. So then we say website dot dump. Hit play, wait a while, gotta wait for the web requests. Gotta wait for those uh, two second delays, those simulated slow website delays. And you see what happens is we're getting it all at once. We're not getting it as it comes in, right? So anyways, thought it was worth talking about the, the superpower that is iAsync enumerable, why it's super important, especially if you're working with data streams, which we all do. And we all run into scenarios where we have to stream a large amount of data and we wanna process it as it's coming in. Um, we've always had that ability, right? We've always had streams available, but this is a beautiful, a really amazing abstraction over them. Uh, so I hope you learned something from this video. If you wanna see more content like this, please subscribe uh, and hit me up on Twitter or whatever. And have a great day. Thanks a lot.